Happy Friday, everybody. Getting started for the weekend. I see a lot of people at the beach. Saw about five, ten people I know um, at the beach. What's up, Sonia? Sonia, my wife, our family, a couple of our friends are going to the beach early next week. I'm excited about that. We'll be in Ocean City, Maryland. Um, probably like 10, 10, 12 of us. Look at this thing. Matt Hockley, dude, call me back. Look at this thing. What is this? What in the world? It's a, is that a freaking, like, turkey? Come on, man. I don't think it's hurt. What is going on? Come on, man. Dude, what is up with this thing? Get out of the road. There we go. Little hustle this morning here, pal. We got places to be. Thing is ugly anyway. Anyway, just what I needed a turkey sitting in the middle of the road this morning. Um, so anyway, I'm excited to go to the beach. We'll be at the beach uh, Sunday. Well, my family's going Sunday. I'm not sure if I'm going to go the whole week. Um, but anyway, uh, I heard this uh, conversation from somebody yesterday. And they were talking to a customer and the salesperson, customer service person had given the client um, an idea of when they would get back to them or when they could expect the, appro the um, uh, proposal. And uh, the customer didn't say anything, but was visibly, you know, oh, okay. And uh, <laughs> the salesperson said, well, you know, I could get it to you a little bit sooner, but you know, I want to under promise and over deliver. And I thought about that and I watched the customer kind of accept that and walk away. And um, I could envision that customer just literally walking somewhere else and uh, getting a proposal and, and making a commitment to someone to do business. And I thought about that and it's an, it's an age old, you know, uh, customer service cliche or, you know, uh, a slogan that 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 somehow uh, salespeople have come to to um, you know use, I think. And I mean, I saw it firsthand, and I saw firsthand the response from the customer. And here's the fundamental issue with under promising: the fact that you're under promising creates the opportunity for the client not to accept your promise. Right, so you're you're assuming when you under promise and say you're going to over deliver that you actually get the opportunity to deliver. So what a lot of times that means, like in sales, is um, whatever your proposal is or whatever conversation you're having with the customer, if you under promise, it requires them for that philosophy to work for them to hang out physically or mentally long enough for you to have the opportunity to over deliver. And I think a lot of times what it's what what it does is it gives us an excuse or an opportunity to be lazy. It gives us uh, an excuse or an opportunity uh, to not put pressure on ourselves um, so that if we do under promise and we're able to deliver, um, over deliver, that we can somehow pound our chest and, and create this perception that we've done an exceptional job. And I'm here to tell you that people, for the most part, are not accepting of under-promising. People have different expectations today. They have different um, timelines that they operate on. So I don't know if I'm still live or if it cut out. There we go. So the, the, what, what I believe you should do is just make a promise and deliver. Forget the under, you know, under, under-promising and over-delivering. Just make a real promise and deliver. You know, um, one of the things that, that I've always done that, you know, it's not for everybody is at times I would specifically over promise and deliver not a ton, but push yourself a little bit, you know, ahead of what you consider to be the standard of what's acceptable and then deliver. And then guess what happens? That becomes an acceptable new standard. You've increased 
uh, the service or, or, or you've, you've shortened the timeline um, that customers rely on or can expect to do business with you. So you got to uh, abandon this, this thought process of, of, of under promising and over delivering. Cause I'm telling you a lot of customers, consumers, um, buyers, sellers, um, whoever it is that you do business with will not stick around to wait for you to over deliver, particularly if you're under prom, you know, under promising and over delivering approach has to do with a deadline or has to do with quality. Uh, most people, you know, can, can, are, are making the decision about whether or not they want to do business with you at the promise phase, not at the delivery phase. Okay. So just know that you're setting yourself up for failure. If you plan to under promise and over deliver, um, just make a promise and deliver on it. Have, have, have real expectations and an understanding of what clients expect and what is an acceptable time frame for you to be able to deliver what you uh, sell or what you build or what you maintain or, or, or whatever. But the thought process of under promising and over delivering is dead. Uh, if you're continuing to use it, you're using an antiquated approach. Um, you're realistically being lazy, I believe. You're giving yourself the the, the right and the excuse um, to not deliver what you should in the first place. Um, because what you're doing is, is again, but the, 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 the theory of under-promising is that you're substantially, or, or, or at least in some capacity, um, shorting the customer from what they deserve. If you, you, you didn't over deliver, you just did what you should have done from the beginning. So stop thinking about this under promising, over delivering approach and just make a promise and deliver on it. I hope everybody has a good weekend. Um, I'm going to the beach, but I will see you on Facebook Live, I'm sure, um, sometime soon. Take care, everybody. We'll see you.